Hello and welcome, it's Bushwacka here, and welcome to my second video on my perfect solar tracking system. This system is even easier to build than the one before and just a little bit less complicated. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Let's get started. Now I found when building my old systems, uh, you had to build the frame up above and place a sensor upside down. Now I did not really like that because it's quite bulky and it just didn't look very good. So uh, while talking with my brother actually, uh, we found a solution for making this even easier that only requires one daylight sensor. It is super easy and I found that it works on pretty much every planet. Actually, I haven't found one that it doesn't work on yet. So hopefully this got, will uh, work out for you guys really well. And you can see how compact it is. It uses one daylight sensor, one circuit housing, and two batch riders. And uh, to make it look a little bit better, I used a door to make a uh, composite roll cover and I'm able to open and close it. Now, you're only ever gonna have to open this once uh, to put the IC in and to program up these batch writers, and then you can close it, and you can just add as many solar panels as you want. So, uh, let's just take a quick look over here, and I'll show you guys how this works. So, I'm going to upload this to the Steam Workshop. Uh, let me turn off my light so you guys can see the screen a little bit better. Uh, now, I've decided to make two different versions of this script because some people were complaining that it wasn't uh, resetting at a good angle. So I've decided to do perfect solar tracking. This is going to be 2.0 uh, with reset. So the resettable version means that at nighttime, the panels will just flip around and uh, they will be uh, facing back towards where the sun will rise, at least on some planets in the morning. So then... Uh, they don't have to move so far uh, when the sun rises. Now, that feature is nice because it saves you a little bit of power. It saves these batch riders from turning on and off throughout the entire night when they really don't need to. But like I said, because it was causing some problems, I decided to totally remove it from one of my scripts. So I'm gonna post these, like I said, both on the Steam Workshop. And uh, we can go ahead. So this is uh, what it'll be called. And I'll leave a link below uh, it's going to be called Perfect Solar Tracking 2.0 with no reset. So in this version, it is very simplified and it's quite uh, short. Actually, I had a little error there. Um, it's going to be quite simple and all it's going to do is uh, read vertical angle and then do some calculations and then write it. And then it's going to read the horizontal, do some calculations and write it. And this is going to do it day and night so that in the morning you won't have any problems if you were before. I can actually uh, re-upload that now. Uh, my perfect solar tracking with the reset is pretty much the same uh, code here, but it has this reset here. So what it's gonna do at nighttime is it's gonna come down to the reset and it's gonna start all over again. And it's gonna, um, pretty much just set them uh, to the angle, like I said, where the sun will rise and it's gonna reset all over again. So right now I have the no reset uh, plugged in here. So we can take a quick look and see how this acts. Uh, now you can see that the sun went down, so there's no more power going to the system. Uh, but although this says solar angle question mark degrees, it's still able to uh, pick up uh, the angle of them. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna just keep on kind of tracking the sun below the horizon, uh, even though it can't see it. And by the time it's morning, it will end up uh, facing the right direction. Like I said before, these batch riders are gonna run all night, unfortunately, which drains a little bit excess power, but honestly, it's really not that much. Now I'm gonna wait until morning time and then I will show you guys how it looks in the morning and we can go over just how to wire this up. And we'll also go over some uh, troubleshooting tips as well. As you guys can see, I gave you a little accelerated clip of what the panels do in this non-resetting mode. Um, I'll actually sneak in right now. I'll do a, a short little clip of how they reset at night. 
So here you're able to see that uh, once the sun goes down and it reaches its designated angle, the panels are just resetting to the position that they're going to be in the morning. And that means that both of the batch riders can just stay off throughout the entire night. But again, if you're having trouble or anything with the solar panels resetting at night, maybe facing the wrong way or something of that nature, you're concerned about them losing power for whatever reason, you can go to this non-resetting mode. Although I do prefer the resetting mode for sure. Uh, now that it's daytime again, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, setting this up. Uh, there were some concerns of it not working properly previously, so I'm going to go through a little bit of a uh, more detailed explanation on exactly how to set this up. Uh, in order to do that, I'm actually going to rip some of this stuff up so we can see things a little bit better. So we're going to uh, we're going to rip open this composite door here. There we go. There we go. Uh, and then I'm also going to take down this wall as well here. There we go. So now we're able to see a little bit more of the internal components, mostly just the wiring. So the wiring is going to be most important, and you're going to be able to see in my code, I've tried to lay it out as simple as possible. I've changed around a little bit of the language, so it's a little more easy to understand. So I prefer the uh, data on one side and power on another, but I realize it isn't what you're going to want to do every single time. So I've actually uh, laid out in the instructions of how to set it up if you have the data and power in one. And all you have to do is just make sure that the data is on the east side. So the east side is going to obviously be where the sun rises in the morning. So put the data side here or the power and data side facing east in the morning. Um, also, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow this down. So obviously you want your data coming uh, and attaching to your IC. So my cable comes down here, it goes into a little splitter here, and it comes in here and all of these have access uh, uh, to the solar panels. It's most important that these batch riders are connected to that. Also, you need to have power for your system. So what I did here is I have my power line, which is a heavy cable. I go into a transformer, and some people were asking questions about that before. The transformer guarantees that uh, this APC here gets power before these batteries. So let's just say these batteries are super low and they try and steal all the power before it will charge this APC. Then you'll have a dead uh, battery in your area power controller here, which I can I can open that up. So you'll have this battery will be dead um, if the battery gets or if, if the power gets stolen by these large batteries. So, and if that dies, your circuitry dies, and that means that your tracking dies as well. So it's very important to have a transformer coming off the power here, and then to have an APC uh, with a large battery. The uh, small batteries can work, it's just not quite as efficient, and it, it will die throughout the night. I can pretty much guarantee that. So the large battery is definitely uh, the best way to go. This power gets routed under here, and comes through here and connects into here. So that means that all of these, just these here, are powered off of this battery right there. You don't want any other systems being powered off that battery or else, again, it could die, which would freeze your solar panels. You really don't wanna freeze your solar panels because then you might have to wait an entire day for the sun to hit them at the right angle to get enough power to start this up again. So uh, that's some of the basics. Now let's take a look at the code and my instructions so then we can uh, get a better understanding of how to hook this up. I really tried to make this as simple as possible. So again, you're gonna go on the Steam Workshop where I will have a link and then uh, you'll be able to click and download that. Then you can open your game and you can import stuff from the library. So what I'm going to do is overwrite something like this. You can see the little steam ID next to it. This was my version 1.0. And so it'll look very similar to this. Again, you just load instructions, overwrite. And I'm going to do the reset this time because that is how I like to have it. So the first thing that you're going to need is a integrated circuit chip. 
and a computer to program it. And also you will need the IC editor in order to do any of this. So uh, now that we have this loaded, let's take a look at the instructions here. So my solar tracking 2.0, uh, this one has n uh, no reset. Sorry, let's load with reset. Okay, so this is solar tracking. This is solar tracking with reset. So I made sure to label that there. So I said split solar panels like I have are connected data east, power west. Combined uh, data power panels are connected with data and power to the east. Uh, so you want to label your sensor, which isn't as important uh, anymore now that we only have one. But you definitely want to label your batch writers. Uh, next note here is you want two batch writers. The input's going to be IC. That uh, the type is going to be solar and the variable will be vertical or horizontal uh, based on obviously which variable, uh, which batch writer it is. And then you just need daylight sensor, which is right side up and it's connected to the north. <clears throat> uh, so now let's take a look at that and see exactly what that means. So uh, actually, let's just go ahead. And so what you'll do from here is you confirm it and then you'll export it to you, to your IC housing. Now, if you only have one IC housing on the circuit, it's very easy, uh, but you may need to label it if for whatever reason you have multiple. So what you click is export, and then you can grab this integrated circuit and you can plop it in here. Now mine's working automatically, but what I uh, would suggest for you guys is um, uh, put your integrated circuit on, have this on, and then turn it off really quick just so you don't accidentally change any of the settings of anything else. So I already came in here and I labeled this. So this is batch rider horizontal and this is batch rider vertical. At the beginning, it doesn't matter how you label these because uh, you'll just go from whatever you labeled them. So this is horizontal, this is vertical. So I plug my chip in, I will take a look and it will only be these three devices on the left hand side. So D0, that's gonna be day sen, which is your daylight sensor. So I have that hooked to my daylight sensor. Right vert is gonna to be to my batch writer vertical and then right hor will be batch writer horizontal. Now, uh, this doesn't work just if you plop these down and label them. You have to change the input of these like my code says the input has to be that IC housing, the output type has to be solar panels, and then the output variable has to be vertical for the one you named vertical, and it has to be horizontal for the one you named horizontal. So let's go ahead and now we can turn our IC housing on, and you can see that it is tracking again. Now that is the basic setup uh, for this. So hopefully you guys are able to get that running. Uh, also, some people have been uh, having comments that it doesn't work right or something, it doesn't appear to be working. What I found is if you're having problems, especially if you're already running your solar system off of an IC, sometimes this gets confused. Like it thinks that the old program is in there or something of that nature. So all you need to do is rip up your IC so just take your drill, rip it up, and then place it back down again, grab your chip, which you need, to, and then throw it back in. And then all these will be reset and you'll be able to program them again. So if it doesn't work really at all, uh, definitely try that first. Now, if the solar panels appear to be tracking in the wrong direction or not following the sun properly, uh, then you need to ensure that your daylight sensor is connected the right direction so it's connected and this way will be north so connected that way and if you made sure that your daylight sensor is facing the right way uh, the next step is going to be make sure that your data is facing the right way uh, towards the sun so pretty much in the morning or to the east you want your data connection pointed in that direction so that it'll track properly. So I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any questions or comments or problems uh, with the system, definitely let me know uh, and I will try to update the code if I need to. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that you enjoyed my last one. 
And this one is definitely more simple and uh, like I showed earlier, it is very easy to put together. So again, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you like videos like this, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a lot of informational videos uh, to help you guys out. Again, thanks for watching. Hopefully I will see you again next time. Bushwhacker out.